Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Slopey Slope Club. It's time for another album discussion and review. That's right. I'm Boy, as always, and with me, twins Josh and Jimmy. What's up, guys? Ooh, we're we twins. Are we though? like the Are we like the Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito movie twins? <laughs> <laughs> Can I yes, be Danny they may DeVito? Look different. Dude? Reddit's, they may look different. Reddit's but they favorite are. actor, Danny DeVito. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are the same. Mm. You know, Joshua and Jimothy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up, guys? How glad, you doing? Glad glad to be back for one of these. I feel like I haven't been around in a while. For this episode, we're gonna uh talk about a uh major debut release album of, of Cyber. It's called uh Tokyo. Cyber, they were uh, previously known as BPM Ichigo Q, formed in 2015 with uh, Ichigo Rinahamu and Nikamo. That's where the Ichigo oh. Oh, Q comes from. Nikamo, the the and Nikamak is the cue. But anyway, they released a couple songs and then they added some more members and then Nikamak left and then they changed their name to Cyber, uh, who is now a, a five it's member. It's not dude. Cy Ader? Nope, it's not Cy Ader, yeah. That's worth mentioning. Okay. <laughs> There's an eight in there, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, Cyber, they're, they're kind of known for their like futuristic pop sound, right? Um, and so Tokyo album we're going to talk about is their major label debut album they signed on to victor i think and and uh this is their third overall album counting stuff that was released under bpm uh ichigo q um tokyo was released january 2020 so i think up to this point uh, of of these album discussions this is the newest album right yes yeah, yeah. We're actually doing something uh current. And yeah, so this this was kind of hype because uh they they announced that they were working with a bunch of different EDM producers, right? Uh, of course they have their frequent collaborator Yunomi who produced um, their previous stuff. You got Masayoshi Imori who we saw at OdaQuest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And someone else we saw at OdaQuest as well. Nakata Yastaka. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, He's one of my favorite producers. Of course, he produces, you know, Kiari Pami Pamu, Perfume, and of course, his own stuff like Capsule. But um, that was kind of where all the hype came from, right? Because he, he's the only producer who got a feature. Yeah, yeah. It's a nine track album, but one track is just an extended version. Um, so this, this is the one that's on like Spotify, Apple Music, right? If we purchase it, it would be the, the limited edition version. Cool mix of uh, pop, EDM, house, some trap, feature bass, of course, in there. And uh, so, yeah. What do you guys think? Have you heard of Cyber before? I'm going to be the first to admit I'm not like the hugest Cyber fan. Um, usually I only kind of like listen to them when like, you know, something new comes out. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll check this out. This is a name I've heard before. Um, but I will say that I think out of all the videos we've done, at least the ones that I've done on this channel for these album reviews, this is probably the one I I feel most out of my element, right? Because um, it's very, very, it's a very EDM album, right? Um, of course, it's got that that uh, idol kawaii vibes, but the the heart of it, it's an EDM uh, EDM album. I feel, and uh, you know, I, I'm a very casual EDM listener. I had like a I had my my short phase. You know, I think any, anybody who goes to the gym will have a short EDM phase at some point. <laughs> um, so that's that's kind of my extent, the extent of my EDM background, right? So, um, yeah, so I think that that might kind of uh, maybe uh, kind of cloud some of my judgment here. But is it just me? Or does a lot of this album just kind of blend into one giant song? Mm, I see what you mean. I feel like there's like three tracks on here that really stand out to me. And uh, the rest kind of all blend together. I think it's it's the same with any 
I guess, like a genre of music that you're not super familiar with, right? There's a lot of nuance in like the the subgenres and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I was actually pretty familiar with Cyber. Um, I've listened to all their stuff before. Like, I'm not big on EDM either, but like Cyber just has a special sound to them that I really enjoy. And then watching them live is like a whole nother experience too, and that just got me like more involved with listening to them. See, Josh says that, but uh, you guys haven't seen him at raves like I have, dude. <laughs> what? The guy's full stringer on stringer tank top. Yeah, stringer tank top, short shorts, <laughs> mesh mesh gloves. Ooh. You know the fish nets. The, yeah, the glowing fingers, you know. For you. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of just um, smarty bracelets. Uh, <laughs> no, I actually love electronic music, and so um, yeah, yeah, I felt like this was right up your alley. When, from when from cyber, me. yeah, started coming up, uh, I was super into them. Like. They had like that feature based sound, which I wasn't like super into uh, from the get go. But um, you know this uh, this whole like getting eight different producers to make eight different tracks uh, was a pretty big pull, I guess, for anyone who's into uh, electronic music because these producers are kind of um, I, I don't want to say like up and coming, but they're pretty like established, right? But um, uh, they're kind of like, what, what do I say? Um, they, they they make a lot of music and put it out on the internet <laughs> on their own kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe someone like Nakata Yastaka, right? He's, he's pretty well known because he's been doing this for a while. But like some of these other producers, you don't even know what they look like, right? They only use like avatars and stuff uh, when they, you know, release things on, on SoundCloud and, and that kind of thing. And so... Uh, it has a kind of like a more uh, forward-looking kind of feel to me. It's like futuristic, right? Because it's it's all these like newer names, kind of. Um, so I feel like it's it's uh, kind of important to to mention the producers because it's it's as much as their kind of compilation album as it is Cypress mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, yeah, I feel that, and especially with this being their like major label debut, kind of. To have all these mm-hmm. new, kind of new faces, if you want to say say yeah. it that way, I think it leaves a big impact. So, Jimmy, you mentioned the the ones that stood out were only like three, <laughs> but uh, well, what were some of the ones? Uh, I think the the main song that stood out to me would be uh, Tokyo Rat City, right? Mm-hmm. That's uh, yes. that was like the main single I think for this this album. Maybe 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 not, but uh, it's what I I first heard, um, and it got me really hyped. And I think maybe, unfortunately, overhyped for this album, right? Because it's it's it it really does set itself apart from the rest of the album. I feel um, you know a lot more variety in the instrumentation here, um, a mix of like electronic sounds, a lot of synth, but then uh, you get like these uh, you know traditional Japanese like wah instruments, right? Like um, like the the acoustic strings and things like that. Um, just kind of and like the drums, definitely. This booming sound in the back, right? And it's yeah, boom. yeah. Um, so I was expecting a little bit more of that, right? Like it really kind of like, you know, that's, that's a sound that you can really just kind of feel bumping in your chest. Um, I feel I feel like uh, that's that's why it stood out so much to me. A lot of the other tracks kind of to me kind of all sit in that like more treble range. Tokyo Rat City was the You Know Me produced one. I think you'd probably like their last album, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Hello New Generation, which yeah. is mostly uh, You Know Me produced. Yeah, I wrote them that it has like kind of like a, if you go to a music festival, I feel like this is the type of song that'll play there. Even like with the mixing it has, like with the whoa, whoa, like I feel like it, it could really be there. And just in the mixing, you could tell as well. And then one other thing is that even though, like this is something that I noticed, like the lead into the chorus is pretty similar throughout, but I feel like the second one like really, really like lands it really well. And I think that's thanks to the space in the middle where they kind of like mellow out a little bit and then come right back into it. And I think that's the thing that I enjoyed most about the song. There's so many different um, like layers, right? As far as like the, the instruments goes, that it gives it a lot more room to play with and to do those like dynamics, you know, like kind of have like, yeah, like that more chill second verse leading into the, the, the second chorus and things like that, that I found like, yeah, it really kind of breaks up a lot of monotony. Um, I think... Um, from my perspective, as a as a, the outsider to EDM, um, I think I think there there is a tendency for um, not as 
well-produced songs to kind of be monotonous, right? Because it's almost like a very copy and paste feel for the instrumentals. But uh, I didn't, I didn't get that vibe from this song at all. Josh, what else did you, what else did you like? Uh, one for me that I put is Tokyo Identity. Oh, that's my other one, dude. <laughs> I feel like this one really stands out to everything because this is more like really focused singing. Like it's more like a pop sound with electronic elements instead of being like more electronic based. And that little like guitar, little little lick with the harmonics. Ooh, so good. Yeah, it's got like a little little pop rock kind of vibe to it, right? Yeah, like the like yeah, that cute little doo -doo -doo -doo, right with the the electric guitar, kind of like. Mm. I think this track has a lot to do with the producers, uh, Neko Hacker, and their like little description of what the music they make is kawaii EDM rock. So it pretty much like explains why it sounds this way, right? Because I. I thought out of all the tracks, this one sounded the most different because of that rock element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if, if you go and listen to Neko Hacker stuff, it's pretty indistinguishable from cy this the cyber song. <laughs> but like, you know, if, for those who don't li really listen to what these producers make, then it sounds pretty unique, right? As far as an idol track. It almost has like a like a, a marching kind of vibe to it, right? Because of that, that kind of uh, like staccato, like bum bum bum, ta, bum bum bum, ta, right? Uh, let me talk about my favorite song of this album. Actually, it's uh, "Yumezora Kokoro." Oh, okay. Ooh, not what I was expecting. Okay, it's the Palam System produced. Palam System is like this this trio that that make these like maximal EDM production, um, and I and I like the atmospheric buildup it has. Um, you know, it starts off kind of like twinkly and then the drums start coming in slowly and then it just gets a little crazy um, and so that's uh, that's one of my favorites yeah like it starts with a really like chill intro and then like halfway through it's like when it starts ramp ramping up and then it really helps accomplish that energy through all the samples it uses and everything goes back into mellow and comes back up for like a little synthy solo so I, I enjoyed it for sure yeah, and then it does it. It does that nice little breakdown, right? Where like a lot of like yeah, it just a lot of the 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 layers kind of just like fall out. And you just get some vocals, you know, a little a little twingling here and there, you know, just for the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, it has a lot of atmosphere, which I enjoyed about it. It's a song that I really want, wish I could see someone just rock out to on a guitar, a guitar with. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, especially <laughs> when you get to like that, those like swells, you know, like. Right, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, dude!" Just someone with like a, a little, you know, bunch of modulators and just going to ham. It'd be cool to see like a, a live band do this. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cause yeah, I can just imagine like the drummer just going off. I I thought it was gonna be a uh, Renai reality. Ah, infamous Nakata Yasutaka feature. Yeah, so this is the one that has the extended mix. Which is basically some extra interludes that's added in the beginning at the end. But um, this is actually one of my, not, I don't want to say least favorite, but I wasn't like s super impressed by it. Can I uh, guess why it isn't? Sure, go ahead. Is it because it sounds more like his style rather than a cyber style? No, it sounds like a Kiari song. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah. I was, I was like, what I was hinting um, at. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's you know, KPP Harajuku style like electro pop. That's it's the style that like it's popularized. That was popularized with with Kiari, right? And that's kind of that's still kind of how she sounds. Um, and as like a fan of KPP, um, I mean it's cool, but it's like why not just listen to KPP? Yeah, and I mean it has like all the cute synths and like vibe overall, but it, like it just sounds like a Kiari song to me, and it's like. Kiari has had better songs in her discography um, than this. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like, if... if uh, I guess if I, I didn't know this was a cyber song, I would have thought it was a Kiari song. I was going to say, because it doesn't sound like a song that was produced for a group with five members in it. Yeah, it's probably like him just... Oh, oh wait, this there is this. Well, let's give this toss to cyber. I have this one halfway done. Let's finish it up. <laughs> it's already so uh digitized, like digitalized their voice, their voices, 
and then they're all singing the melody. And so it all kind of blends into one kind of digital voice, you know, where it doesn't really find, like, it doesn't sound like I'm listening to a girl group. Right. Yeah. Like you could have gave this to either a one person or a five person group, but it still sounds yeah, the same. You could give it to perfume and it would have sounded the same. It has too much of the elements that you hear in a Kiari song. There's like the countdowns, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. one, two, whatever, you know, this is like, it's like you listen to a Kiari song and you'll find those same elements. At least if you compare Kiari and perfume, it's like completely different. You can hear uh, a lot of elements that are used in Perfume's music that is not uh, always in Chiari's music. And that's like kind of how you differentiate the two. And so um, I, I just, I was hoping that he would make something like unique, more unique for Cyber. Yeah, just because it's so comparable, right? To actual KPP, right? And it's, it's weird because, you know, he's produced a bunch of different artists and like including his own stuff and they all sounded very different from each other it just yeah it just feels like oh crap i forgot i was supposed to turn in a song today here you go cyber like we we all saw him dj right and you know there's like all those different like styles that he that he used right like we saw capsule uh and that sounded different from kiari stuff right so I, i feel like yeah maybe that's like the biggest thing is just because like Maybe maybe if you didn't have that background knowledge that this song would have been perfectly serviceable, right? But then when you do, it just you can't help but feel like it's kind of like a squandered potential. Right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Especially for me because I, I listen to everything he does. And so I'm just like, there's better stuff. Boy was actually let down by the hype, you know. It is what it is. Um, let's 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 get into some of these other songs then, huh? Oh, okay, so there's the other guy that we saw, the other producer, Masayoshi Imori. He made a song called Next Door. Mm-hmm. Mm. Man, this has that dick bass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely got like some darker vibes than the rest of the, the album, right? It's kind of like this kind of broken, kind of like it doesn't flow very like nicely, but has kind of like this irregular, like chopped up, like broken sound to it you know it's kind of weird because it's almost like gobsmacked in the middle of this album if you look at the track list and see where uh it's placed like the the songs that are before and after it are very uh cute i think they did good with the sampling and everything i think the the mid tempo like some people can see that as a negative but i kind of like i was like jamming with it a little bit and Again, the, the interesting start that it has, but then once the the drop hits, and that's when you could tell what the song is. Right, it like it kind of swerves you. <laughs> yeah, because there's none of that bass in the first uh, couple parts of the song, and then it comes in. It's like oh. I think what makes this song work as a mid tempo song, as opposed to a lot of other idol songs, is that like this song has a groove, right? Like it, it feels very purposeful that it's at this tempo because it's like trying to kind of keep you. You can't settle, right? Like you can't like just chill out. It's not a ballad, but at the same time, it's not like this like really drivey song either. And it's like trying to keep you in this space. Whereas I feel like a lot of other idol songs that end up being mid tempo just default there, and there's not really like a, what to me feels like intention. I mean, he was pretty cool when we saw him too, right? Masayoshi Mori. Yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's that's just his style, I guess. Uh, yeah, but I still think it, it fit in. It might have been like a little bit of a like swing away from the cyber sound, but I still think it had little elements in there. I think as a standalone track, it's fine. But the fact that it's following a song like Tokyo Shoujo, mm, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. one of the lightest, breeziest songs on this album. Yeah. Like the main instruments in this song are like very, it's like they're like chimes, right? It's, it's very just, like whimsical sounding. Yeah. And then, all, and then you go from that to the... Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's like a huge contrast. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you think about Tokyo Shoujo? It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's per- like it's perfectly serviceable. Um, I think that my my issue with Tokyo Girl is my my main issue with this album as a whole is that it's very um to me comfortable for passive listening. Yeah, it's not one of those songs that I I like or one of those songs or albums that I feel like uh kind of draw me to really give it my full attention. I wrote them that it feels like it could be in the background of a shop at Harajuku. Yeah. Like I could, yeah, it's very like 
okay, I'm going to be having a conversation with friends while this is playing, or I'm going to be doing something else while this is playing, all right? Um, which is fine. I think maybe for what I was looking for, especially with, like, I mentioned earlier, looking, like, at Tokyo Rat City, I wanted something a little bit more that would just kind of grab my attention. Yeah, that's, like, the, when I first listened to this album, that's, I had the same thought, um, especially coming from my favorite track off the album, right? So I was like, oh, man, so hype. And then, you know, they bring it back down and it's more like mellow, I guess. Um, it gives the, the, it gives off the feeling of like being very like spacey. It's like a lot of like room in between the sections. But it's actually like really uh, dense, I guess, in, in as far as instrumentation goes, right? There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's just not like at the front of everything it's just kind of there until you get that weird woodwind part like <laughs> like right before uh the last kind of build up after listening to it again it's like oh man there's actually a lot of stuff going on in this track <laughs> i mean it's it's not my standout track okay what else uh tokyo innovators i <laughs> there's a mix of like you know your standard cute pop uh idol pop stuff but then it like towards the middle there's that like hard hitting bass part that's i guess pretty uh uh what's the word that, that's like the producer style mm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but you kind of have to listen to the track to get there and at the beginning it doesn't really draw me in that much and maybe this fits for a lot of the songs but i, I just wish that this song had a little bit more of a melody to the chorus or not to the verse, maybe the whole song in general. <laughs> right. I feel like a lot of the melodies in, in, in the, in this album comes in the instrumentations. Mm-hmm. Right. And we, and, and, you know, for the fact that it's a producer focused album, maybe that's what they're going for. But me as an idol fan, I think I, I, I was expecting a little bit more of the melodies to be in the vocals. Yeah. Which is kind of why like songs like Tokyo identity really stick out. Right. This is like very like lots of cool things happening in the instruments. And then the vocals is like staccato sing talky. Mm-hmm, right. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Now that you bring it up. It's yeah, it's very more focused on the style of each producer. Yeah, I think if the vocals were a little bit more drawn out, Tokyo Innovator, I feel like it could have been raised up a couple points in my book. But I think it still has like that kind of like cute cyber feel to it. Like I don't think it strays too far from their style. It's cute and stuff, but I think the, the best part of the track is when it gets to that bass part mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's more of the producer style than it is cybers um so it's kind of like mm, it's all right i guess <laughs> in the end because yeah, it has to be a balance for all these songs right they have to kind of make their own stuff but also balance out cyber sound and can't stray away too far from that yeah which some did better than others i will admit <laughs> moshi moshi japan japan japon dude J- japon sorry that's, that's my other favorite track from this um Oh, oh okay. yeah. It's I don't know. I just like that that you know super energetic like bouncy. Mm-hmm. And then there's like that really like fuzzy bass. Uh, so really like the the energy on this one. Yeah, yeah. Like I wrote like you could jam to this song, but like I don't think this is a song I would look for. I feel like if it just came on, I'd be like okay, and then just like jam to it, but not really like want to listen to it all the time. It didn't really stand out to me when I first listened to the album. Uh, after going through it again and comparing it with all the, the other tracks, uh, this is a standout for me. Yeah, I, I do appreciate this. this. is one of the songs that has uh, a little bit more of a melody present, right? Like, uh, I, can, I can imagine listening to someone just sing this song, right? A lot of the other songs, I, I, it's like you kind of can't really do that, you know, because it's so... The song is really about the the production than it is more more so than the vocals. I say you, you say. don't want to hear someone just going ah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas like yeah, this one kind of has like a very like yeah like a strong melody present. And so it's like, and like yeah like okay like if someone were to sing like the the verse, I'd be like oh okay I, I can I can recognize that. All right, and that looks like that's all of the songs. So let's go ahead and rate it. Remember, this is one to ten. One being we don't recommend this. Five being, it's an average album, and ten being we recommend it to everyone. Uh, Cyber Tokyo, I'll give this a seven out of ten. 
um, it's pretty good if you're a fan of EDM, like I am. Uh, and if you're an idol fan, then it's just like, ooh, the merging of the two. So good, man. Um, I always like when idols work with different producers. Um, it works out for some idol groups better than others. But, um, you know, I think this was the, the big pull for this album, right? Uh, eight tracks, eight producers, and they all sound different. Um, and I think the, the, the whole like idea for the album, it's, it's Tokyo, right? And so it's, it's supposed to kind of like represent all the different like parts and subcultures of Tokyo, right? So like Harajuku, this is like fashionable, right? Nakata, Kyari, right? And then there's like Shibuya's club scene with all the, the heavy hitting bass type stuff. And of course, like Akiba has the moe otaku type, uh, things like that and so i think if, if coming to it from that idea uh, it works out pretty well but um yeah like the, my favorite tracks are really good i thought i thought uh, but there are only a very few and the tracks that don't stick are just like kind of forgettable and not as good but the standouts really good the, the non-standouts are just kind of meh so seven Seven out of ten. So for me, I also gave this a seven out of ten. <laughs> and the reason I did is I think this is a good blend of introducing maybe newer sounds to the cyber repertoire, as well as containing some of the old sounds it had. But I feel like sometimes it strays away a little bit too much from that. Um, again, there are interests in the song. Like I think a couple of songs really stand out, but as Boy mentioned before. I think some of the songs actually just like blend in together and it's kind of hard to distinguish them, even though by themselves, they're all unique and everything. But I feel like when you just listen to it in a row, it's kind of like, okay, let's, I'm just waiting for the next song to pop up that I want to listen to. And I think looking back at some of their older albums, you can really tell this and see how much they pop out versus this, where they kind of blend together. And even looking at their single releases, which I really enjoy, I think those like are so different and able to be distinguished from each other. So again, seven out of 10. All right, uh, my vote is not gonna count for much, but I'm gonna give it a six out of 10 for myself personally. Um, as someone who's not like the biggest EDM fan, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's definitely not a bad album. Like I said, the entire thing was very listenable. There was nothing that like stuck out to me that was gonna make it like, Ugh, oh god, this this song's terrible or anything like that, right? And, and conversely, there were a few songs that, like to me, like I like well, like to me, like I said, was very enjoyable. Um, but I feel like if anything, I would rather just go back and listen to those songs. I don't think I'd really spend much time revisiting this album. And so I think for that reason, uh, yeah, it's going to be a six for me. And so that brings our total up to a 20. So if you take that average, you get a 6.6666667. So round it up, it's going to be a 7 out of 10 Ooh. from us. All right. For Cyber's Tokyo. Looking forward to more stuff by them. I think they're like the next big thing. I, I hope they are. I don't know. I just think they're really cool uh, as far as like idols go. So I, I hope their future stuff will be even better. Yes, and if you're ever in Japan and Cyber's playing, I definitely recommend going. Like even just going for the audience. I think the audience is a big part in all idol concerts, but I think for Cyber, it's a special community they have that I think it's worth checking out. But yeah, that does it all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and leave a like. And if you have any comments on what we're saying, whether you agree or disagree with our opinions, please leave that down in the comments below. But that does it all for us this time. Catch you guys in the next album discussion. Bye. Bye.